Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Refine Horizons, and I'm going to do a couple videos, show you how you can enhance Microsoft Excel uh, using Python. So we use Excel quite a bit here at Refine Horizons. Excuse me, I'm burping because I've been drinking Yerba Mate tea. Blame Greg, Greg Gibson and Brian Lizer for that. Um, so pardon, pardon my my belching. Um, we use Excel quite a bit here at Redefined Horizons, and uh, we we don't we don't abuse it uh, like they do at some places. So we, we don't use it for uh, databases. Uh, we we use a, a product called Airtable for that or or uh, SQLite. Um, so, but we do use Excel for for what it's made for, which is uh, you know data data wrangling and data crunching and data analysis. Um, so, <clears throat> Python can can supercharge that a little bit. And so, uh, what I wanted to do is show you how um, you can use uh, Python um, to uh, create user defined functions in Excel. And I, and I'll do uh, more than one uh, video on this. Um, so, but I do want to just show you a couple different tools uh, that you can use uh, to do that. So the one I'm going to use is called Pixel. It's a, how you pronounce Pixel, um, and it is a commercial uh, product. Um, there is an, an, a similar open source tool um, called XL Wings, which is also uh, very good. Uh, so this web page right here kind of goes over the, the differences between Pixel and XL Wings. And this is a little bit out of date. Um, XL Wings does do some of the stuff that that uh, that Pixel does now. That, that So this is not 100% accurate. Um, so for example, you can use uh, XL Wings to write uh, user-defined functions, uh, which is what we're going to do. Uh, but anyways, this this goes over some of the differences uh, in the two uh, the two solutions. Uh, so let me just show you guys. This is the XL Wings website. Um, so uh, XL Wings is open source. They do have a commercial version, um, but I'm going to be using Pixel. Um, I had some trouble uh, getting XL Wings to to run properly on my Microsoft Windows computer. That doesn't mean everybody will have those problems, um, but they, they both are installed a similar way. You do you do have to be fairly handy with Python. And you got to you got to understand how to use the pip package manager and to to get it to work. Um, both for that's for both that's for Excel Wings and for Pixel. But Pixel seems to work a little better, and I and uh, it's a little more full featured and tailored for what I want to do. And um, it's it's very affordable, so as a business owner, I, I don't mind paying for that extra convenience. So uh, the subscription is uh, about thirty dollars per user per month. Um, on, that's on a monthly. It's it's actually less if you're if you're annual. Uh, so it's very reasonable for me for my company. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use Pixel, and um, I I'm not going to do a video that shows you how to get it installed and up and up and running. Um, because they they have so one of the things I like about these these folks over at Pixel is they have a really good um, they have a really good documentation and uh, they have this video here that walks you through exactly how to get it installed and uh, it's super super good walkthrough so I didn't want to repeat that I'll try and remember to put a link to that video to this video here on, on uh, in the description for this training video on YouTube so anyways that's what that's what we're using we're using Pixel. Um, and I'm not going to show you how to set it up, um, but I am going to show you because because that other video from Pixel does that. But once you have it set up, I am going to show you how to write some functions. And the reason I wanted to do that was uh, I think it's a really good way just to learn uh, the basic Python syntax without having to worry about creating classes and um, wiring up a, a GUI and something like Tkinter or PySide. And so it's just a, it's a good way to just get introduced to kind of the basic structures of the language, the basic syntax. Um, and so I, I thought it'd be good to do that. What I will also do is show you how to um, do the same thing using C Sharp in um, another tool, and this is a free tool. It's a pretty cool tool um, called uh, Excel DNA. Uh, again, it's not quite as polished as Pixel, uh, but it's a cool tool and it's free and it uses C Sharp. So I'll, I'll do another video that shows you how to 
I will try to do another video that shows you how to do the same thing. Okay, so I have um, Excel set up with Pixel. And so how do you know that? You'll know that because you'll get this Pixel example tab and you'll also see Pixel in your add-ins here. So you, so you come in here and say about Pixel. It'll, it'll show you this information. So we've got Pixels up and running. Just by default, when I open a new workbook in Excel, I'll have this. So I've got this uh, file open in Thonny, which is a really cool little Python EDE I talk about in some other videos. Uh, so, but you could do this in Notepad or Sublime or another, another just big basic text editor. So you really only need uh, three or four lines to uh, create a UDF, a user-defined function that you can use in Excel. So you need to import uh, this decorator Excel funk from Pixel. So that's what I do here on the first line. And a decorator is just a special kind of annotation um, or flag um, in Python. Um, and what it does is it decorates the function. So what this this does is it's just telling Pixel that hey, this is a this function here that we're defining. Say hello. We want that to be exposed in Excel. And the way we tell Pixel that is with this what they call this decorator here. It's just like a flag. Okay. And then the next thing you need. So you need to import Pixel. You need to import that decorator from Pixel. You need to include the decorator on at least one function, and then you need to define your function. So I've just defined a simple function here called say hello. It prints out hello Landon. Okay, so let's just see if that will work. So we can say equals here, say hello, and then we put in our two parentheses, and you can see it returns that value. Now, just to show you that this is dynamic, let's go ahead and change this. So we're going to say hello YouTube viewer. Okay, which will which will probably be my wife because she's the only one that watches my videos, and I don't even know if she watches them all. Okay, so then we're going to just come down here and we're going to, oh, sorry, we got to reload that. So we'll reload. Okay, and then we'll try it here. Hello, oh, say hello. I feel like I didn't get a fresh load on that. Okay, so you can see now that's dynamically updated, right? <clears throat> okay, so you can you can edit those functions. Now, obviously, this isn't very useful. So you know, what, is, what like we want to do something useful. So, um, and I and I'm a land surveyor and GIS guy. So we're going to do some spatial stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to do a couple things here. I'm going to add a little section below my file here, where I so I can just test the output in Thonny of these functions before we load them in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new um, a new function. So we're going to put that decorator in. Okay, and then we're going to say we're going to define a new function. So we're not doing anything with classes here. We're just we're just implementing standalone functions in Python. And I'm going to say um, extract northing. Okay, and so what we're going to do is um, and I may not do it, I may break this up in a couple videos, but we're going to define a bunch of functions that work with survey point data. So what I'm doing in this function is I want to pass it a set of cells that represent a survey point and have it give me just the northing. Okay, so all these functions that work with survey point data are going to take data in the same uh, same order. So it's point ID, northing, easting, elevation and description so if you're a land surveyor you'll be familiar with that okay then we put a colon now what we want it to do is super simple we just want it to return the northing okay and this this seems a little a little dumb right but you'll see uh, it's super simple and we want to start super simple right um, and so I'm actually gonna make uh, I'm gonna make three of these or four, so we're gonna. So we also want the easting. We want the elevation. We want the description, and we want the uh, point identifier. Okay, and I'm actually gonna put this one at the top in the file because that just makes sense. It it comes first. Okay, and 
then we'll just change these arguments real quick that we're returning from each function. Now, before we um, save this and try and make these changes in or test these functions in Excel, let's just test them in Thani. Okay, so we can do we can test at least part of the functionality. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, just call one of these functions. So I'm going to say extract point identifier, and then we're going to call this with um, some point data. So I'm going to give it a northing. So it's got a point number of 503, a northing of 5,000, an easting of 10,000. An elevation of 999 and a description of we'll say found okay and so we're just going to save this now um, and run it and you can see I've got a problem in my module okay and so what it's saying here is it can't find it can't find this module. Okay, and that's because I don't have that module installed in Thani yet. So let's just come in here to manage packages and we'll search for Pixel and see if they've got it. I believe it's on PyPy, so we should we should be able to find it. Okay, so let's install that. Take us just a minute. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so I believe that um, that that went ahead and ran. Now we didn't get anything back uh, because because <laughs> because we didn't print anything to the command line. So let's change this a little bit. So I'm just going to make a, a string variable called result, and we're going to set it equal to the, this function call, and then we're going to say print result so that we can actually see something down here on the stack trace on the on the command prompt okay so you can see there it, it went ahead and gave it gave me the point ID okay so we can actually do now we can copy this if we wanted a few times and um, so this is this is kind of this is a, a little bit like unit testing um, so we can actually test these different functions here so we'll just call each function that we have defined in our file now we haven't done anything in Excel yet obviously um, but we'll do that in a minute uh, this is the description okay and uh, save that and we can run it again so you can see it's looking it works the way we want. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could dress up your your kind of test here a little bit, and you could say uh, you could give this some header, some headers. Okay, so we're just putting in some uh, we're putting in some labels here. We should call them labels, not headers. Okay, so we're just we're just dressing up our tests a little bit. Okay, so we can save this and run it again, and this time we get the the headers. You know, it'd be nice if we had a new line in there, but. You guys get the idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we save that. Let's minimize this and see if we can get this to work in Excel. So we're going to come back over to our our pixel tab here and we're going to reload. Okay, and now uh, we're we're actually going to go ahead and um, put in some point data.
And if I was going to, you know, get serious about this, I'd have some just some sample data and a spreadsheet. But we're just going to we're going to fix some in here real quick. Okay. I'm going to make this 12,000 just so you guys can see that it's actually working with the data in Excel. And we'll make this a found stone monument. And, and usually uh, in surveying your descriptions are in all caps. Okay, so we might we might have a spreadsheet that looks something like this. Okay, so now we're just going to see um, can we extract uh, the northern from here? So we'll say equals extract. You can see our functions come up. Okay, and now we're going to pass this range here. And, uh, and it didn't work. Probably didn't work because um, I'm passing it a range and the way I set the function up we have to do something like this actually. Oop. So we have to separate these arguments with commas. Okay, and it'd be nice. We can we can make this work with a range. We won't do that in this video though. Let's see if that fixes it. All right, let's see. We've got A2, B2, C2, D2, and E2. So we've got the five arguments. So I'm not sure. Oh, I got an extra comma there. Let's try that. There you go. Okay, so that's working, right? Just like we thought. So we can pull the northing out of that. Uh, list of cells there. Now obviously that would be more helpful if it worked in a range, so we might make that change. Um, um, so let's just let's let's try something that's you know that's not very useful. So uh, let's let's try something that it um, that might be a, a little bit uh, more useful. Um, so let's just um, say that in our description. Uh, we're going to use a feature code, so I'm going to change this a little bit. So we'll say this is a topo point. So it's top face of curve. Let's just say at uh, catch basin. Okay, so that's our description. We'll make this a topo point number. Okay, so what we would like, let's say our feature code library is set up so that the first word in our description is always the feature code and we'd like to extract the feature code okay that's a little that's a little more helpful okay so what we'll do now you can do you can code that in excel um, but it might be it might be a little bit clunky um, so let's let's write a function that does that so I'm gonna go back to Thani we're gonna make a new function here we're gonna say um, extract feature code Okay, and, th and this time we're going to make this um, a little bit simpler. We're going to say, hey, just give us the fe if we just pass you the description, give us the feature code. Okay, now we need to do some work before we return our value here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to split. Um, we want to split the string, the description, um, using a space, and I got a. Um, Bear with me here because I got to remember the exact syntax for that function. Okay, so we actually can we we need it. That's a method of the string class. So we're going to say we got to call it on description. So we're going to say split, and then we give it the word we want to split with. Okay, which is just a space. And then we should be able to just return the very first element of that list. So this is going to be, I'm going to call this parts. So it's going to give us a list. We'll store in a variable called parts. And then we just want to return the first part of that. So we're going to say parts 0, because the first element in a Python list is at the 0 position, not the 1 position. Okay, now we don't know if that's going to work, right? I might have bugged my code, but before we dump it in Excel, 
uh, we can just test it here. So we can say result, extract, feature code. And then we'll print. Feature code label, and then we'll say print result. Okay, so let's see if we get, so we should just get, oh, we gotta change this though. So this is gonna be uh, TFC at catch basin. Right. And we, re we really only have to change it on the last one. Okay, but just to be consistent here, I'll change it all the way down. Now, I like doing this in Thonny versus like a text editor like Sublime because it is going to catch some Python errors, which is helpful. Okay, so let's see if we get TFC out of the bottom of this thing. Okay, so I, I do have a bug here because we're getting an error. Okay, so it says, hey, um, you're missing one positional argument. Extract feature code, missing one required argument. So we got to come up and look at line 54. Oh, because I didn't pass it. Um, oh, I didn't pass it the description. It just takes the description, I forgot. So, we actually, this function calls a little bit different. That's a nice thing about Fawny. Okay, so you can see, there it is, feature code uh, FC. So it gave me FC, oh, because this says FC, because I copied it wrong. Okay, but I think it, it does what we want. Now, you might say, hey, um, you know, I could do that in Excel, you know, with the with the left or right uh, function in Excel, I could probably do the same thing. And yet, you're probably right. Uh, but here's, as an example, what you could do, we won't, we won't implement all the code, but you could say, um, if this, if this is a non-standard feature code, Uh, return the feature code with a flag. Okay, and then you could say, uh, so we'd have to code an if statement, but we could check it against a list of, of feature codes, and then we could say if, you know, if we found that it was a non-standard feature code, we could say, hey, um, we want to create, we want to create a new string. Uh, we actually want to join the string. So we could say uh, we'll make our string uh, non-standard FC with a colon, okay? And then we can say we'll put a space to, and we can say join parts one. Sorry, parts zero, and then we can return that. So we could say flag code, and then we could return flag code, okay, now this isn't going to work, well actually we could, we could just make this work right now, so let's just say if, <clears throat> so we're going to get rid of parts one here, we're going to get rid of returning that, so down here we'll say if parts one, or part zero, sorry, does not equal TFC. So we'll pretend that's the only code in our library. So if it doesn't match, we want to return a flag code. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna add this flag to the front. Now let's just see if that works. So we shouldn't get the flag code here because we're we're passing uh, if we have to make this TFC. So let's try that. Okay, so it, it doesn't like something I'm doing. It doesn't like how I'm joining my string here. Join parts zero. Uh, let's see. You know why? Because it wants a. I think it wants a list. 
So let's just, um, hmm. So it takes a list. Let me figure out how to fix that real quick, guys. All right, so we're gonna change this. This is actually not a good way to do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say flag code equals, and then we're just gonna use the plus symbol to join these. Okay, so let's try. I was I wasn't using join properly. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see here it says feature code none. Okay, and that's because uh, we need an we need an else. Okay, so I didn't I didn't put an else in. So we're gonna say else uh, return parts zero. Okay, so if it is in the code library, the else will execute and we'll get the feature code. If it's not in our library we'll we'll return it with a flag so let's see if that works okay so now we have uh, the feature code returned without the flag right because we told it it was in the library now let's just do this again and uh, this time we're going to give it something we're going to say hey flow line isn't in our feature code library and we're going to say does it see that that does it see that and, and return it with the flag Okay, so I, I messed something up here. Uh, let's see. Oh, this should say flagged. Okay, so you can see here it's recognized that that flow line isn't in the code library, and so it's returned that with the flag, non-standard feature code. Okay, now that's something you definitely would have a hard time doing with a function in Excel, right? You could maybe code that in VBA for sure, but you couldn't just do it with a with a basic function. All right, so let's see if that works in Excel. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna reload our Python. Okay, and I'm gonna make another point here. And we're gonna make this flow line. Okay, and then we're gonna try that new function. Okay, and uh, I gotta remember what it's called now. Extract feature code. Okay, now it should give us the unflagged feature code. Yeah, it's like my uh, it's like my Thony file did save. That's weird. Let's try it again. Oh, it's because I didn't pass it the value. Sorry, guys. Okay, so it worked there. Now here it should hopefully give us the flag and it does okay so you can see uh, you know Python's pretty powerful right so you could do a lot of different things with the descriptions and your point points with a, with a simple function there okay so you know it would be really cool is if you could set that up to where uh, this um, this function um, and I wouldn't call it extract feature code maybe we'd call it check feature codes and it could read your list of feature codes from a from a text file um, and then it could it could let you know which uh, feature codes weren't standard. So you can do some pretty cool stuff. Um, this is just an introductory video. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another video where we where we do some stuff that's a little more useful with the range of cells. And then we'll show you guys how to code some of this um, in Excel DNA using C Sharp. And uh, maybe we'll even uh, tinker around a little bit and, and get that check feature code function to work with the, with the text file of feature codes. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.